Thanks for joining us on Tandem Radio for a very special segment by design, focused on helping you understand how God designed you so that you may be healthy and productive in fulfilling God's purposes in your life for many years to come. Now let's join our host, health expert and public speaker, Dr. James Prudian. Hello and welcome to the By Design radio program. My name is Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare and PrudianHealthcare.com, where health literacy is the key to longevity. And as long as God has us on this side of eternity, my show is designed to educate you and your families to help you feel better, function better, and live as many quality, disease-free years as possible. We are on show number 33 this week, and this is the week where we have a little bit more time to spend together because they've extended our show time from uh, what it was by about five minutes. So um, it's impossible for me to slow down when I speak. So if you've kept up with me over the last 33 weeks, this is show number 40, uh, 34, and we're in the middle of immune function. This is part two of immune. And if you remember that immune is one of the eight foundational uh, topics that the show was designed on. And by design, is all about God's design for us and how we have gotten so far away from nutritional, psychological, and physical design, and we've adapted a man-made or a man-implemented uh, view of health. And this is the reason why so much chronic illness ha- is in our society, like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, osteoporosis, autoimmune diseases, which we're going to be touching on today with immune function. And so if we look at what God's design was for us, um, the show is here to use science-based facts that were, that were created by him so that we can understand how it's so easy to follow man's world and the way man has implemented a diet and a stress level and a uh, fitness level. Uh, agenda that isn't necessarily right for us. So hopefully that's come across in the first 33 weeks. Uh, we follow uh, our Bible verse is uh, Luke 137, for with God nothing is impossible. And Luke 137 is important to me because I feel as though every day we can make change with education. As long as we're educated, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to sell you or to give you simple, tangible advice based upon biochemistry, science, biology, chemistry, uh, anatomy, physiology, and all those fun subjects that not many people like to study. So let's dive into our second part on immune health. We started the show last week talking about parts of the immune system. We went through the anatomy, the the physiology, and we're going to continue that conversation and get into the actual pathogens that impact our immune function, which make us sick. And then we're going to start talking today about what are some of the healthy things we could do to empower our immune uh, system. One of the documents I found this week in preparing for the show came from Metagenics in their uh, nutraceutical journal. And on immune health, it's funny, they have immune health in their uh, tagline to immune health is strength is the ideal state. The visual on immune to me is a guy like curling a dumbbell. That strength, we want a strong, empowered immune system. We never want to be immunosuppressed. The one thing we don't want to do in our day-to-day walk is if we look at the triad of health, physical, nutritional, psychological, we don't want to disempower. We want to empower our immune system. And just a quick little uh, couple paragraphs here. The immune system is perhaps the most important body system when it comes to maintaining health and living a vibrant, active lifestyle, as much as it warrants effective support measures at appropriate times. So the immune system is complex, but strategic health support can be very simple. A healthy immune system provides multiple response layers against aggressive environmental factors. So the strength of this barrier is influenced by lifestyle habits that can be uh, that can be depleted by the body's Uh, let's just say what we're doing in our lifestyle. So here is this barrier that's impacted by stress, fast food, lack of exercise, the back to the triad, physical, nutritional, psychological. What is our lifestyle? What does it consist of? That lifestyle impacts that barrier, which is our immune response to this bad stuff. 
So let's continue. So replenishing nutrients essential to healthy immune function can certainly help. While we get enough rest, relaxation, recreation time, um, of, of course, our social life with our, our family and our loved ones are all associated with vitality and, and longevity. So uh, adequate macro and micronutrients play an essential role in our immune cell function. So this immune cell function, so for instance, most of us have heard vitamin C is good for our immune system and it prevents us getting the common cold. Zinc also. This immune function is nourished by uh, macro and micronutrients. And those macro and micronutrients that should be contained in our food supply, if you go back a few shows ago when we were covering nutrition and the inflammation in our diet and we tied in poor digestion with uh, a toxic uh, uh, diet, those factors coming together impede that immune function. So if we tie together the way we're eating generally a toxic diet, 90% of the American food budget is spent on processed foods, for instance, that's man-made food, not God's made food. And we look at it from a digestive perspective, that toxic food now has to be digested. Our digestive system is taxed, it's exhausted, it's tired, so it makes us tired because we're eating an inflammatory diet. These all then impact maybe the most important system of all, our immune system. Because think about it, guys, if we're chronically getting sick and we could help our immune function, we would. So if you know you have to change the tires to your car, you're not gonna drive your car until you get tire blowouts. You're gonna change the oil every 3,000 miles to prevent uh, a, a, your engine to, to uh, cause damage to your engine. We don't wanna wait and if your body is giving you symptoms of being immunosuppressed, you're getting chronically sick, we want to restore this strong barrier. And that barrier begins with understanding what we spoke about last week, understanding that the role that certain uh, body parts, such as the thymus gland, the lymph nodes, the spleen, the bone marrow, those were the body parts when we went through the anatomy of our immune system. They're critically important that we empower them. We don't weaken them. So the thymus gland, for instance, which is most active when you're a child, neonatal right up through in, in the puberty years, and is located uh, right above your heart, like in the top part of your chest, this thymus gland when we're, when we're in our uh, puberty years is very, very active. It's making T cells. Maybe you've heard of these T cells. These are, type, these are specialized cells that go out and kill the bad guys. We want really good T cell production. The bone marrow, which also makes specialized types of cells, uh, white blood cells and such. So once again, we have neutrophils and we have uh, lymphocytes and monocytes and these types of cells, these specialized cells, all serve a purpose in protecting our body from becoming sick. Uh, lymph nodes, which blood has to be um, basically screened, it has to be uh, uh, filtered, and the lymph system filters our blood. That's many, when we are sick and we have the swollen lymph nodes under our, under our neck, for instance, or in our neck, that's the lymph getting clogged up in the node because there's so much debris being dumped out of the blood into our lymph system. The largest lymph gland in the body next up is the spleen. And finally, the submucosal area of the GI tract. I shared with you last time that the, the majority of our immune system, you know, the large part of our immune system is actually in our gut. So those healthy digestive enzymes are critically important that as we're digesting our food, those probiotics are the ones that are keeping us healthy and fighting off those bad guys as well. So we want to keep our gut in a very anti-inflammatic state. We want to detoxify our liver and our gut by eating lots of of fruits and vegetables, majority of vegetables throughout our day, the high fiber foods that are found in, in vegetables. And we wanna be eating a whole foods diet, not man's processed food, which is gonna cause us to inflame in our stomach, small intestine, large intestine, thereby impacting our immune function. Because our probiotics need to be in a healthy state. They need to be in a healthy environment to do their job. So these lymphocytes, 
lymphocytes, which are the T cells and the B cells, and there's also natural killer cells. They're called NK cells. These white blood cells, red blood cells, are working primarily the white blood cells to killing off these nasty infections and pathogens through the thymus gland and lymph nodes, the spleen, the bone marrow, and the intestine. So if we look at the fact that everyday pathogens, things that are foreign invaders, are molecules or you know, usually a protein that is considered harmful to the body. And these are found in bacteria, viruses, parasites, fungus, molds, even food particles and chemicals and allergens such as, you know, pet dander. These are all foreign invaders to our body. And every day we have specialized cells. You don't have to think about it. It's done by design to protect us and fight off these nasty foreign invaders. Now, some of these foreign invaders, you know, when our body is at the weakest state that it could be in, what time of life is our body at its weakest state? Well, a baby, for instance, has to be kept clean, right? Mommies and daddies are always sanitizing the room. Don't touch the baby. Don't put your hands near the baby's mouth, right? We've all, I have five children of my own, right? One of the key things that my wife and I did when we had brought a baby home, very little interaction with people visiting. Why? Because I knew that the baby is generally immunosuppressed. That thymus gland hasn't really kicked in yet, making those T cells. I want to protect that sterile little individual from these foreign invaders because they just don't have the immune function function to fight off the bacteria, the viruses, the parasites, the fungus, the mold that you and I, at, I'm age 47, I'm running around, I'm exposed to it because I have a healthy, robust immune system. The other type of person that we really want to protect against uh, or is typically immune. Uh, suppressed are our elderly. So whenever you hear about you know a flu being uh, introduced or an epidemic, we always talk about infants and older people. Why? Because they're generally immunosuppressed. So. With us, you know, living our day-to-day -day life, we of course want to limit our exposure to uh, these these pathogens, but they're out there, and we have to every day look at the pathogen entering our body, and these pathogens can actually not only get you sick, like the common cold or the flu, but these pathogens can also break down the immune system, and we could develop autoimmune disorders. So pathogen autoimmunity represents a breakdown of the complex control systems of the immune system. This results in self-destruction. This is autoimmune disorders when the immune system turns on itself and breaks down here, the, it's, the immune system is breaking down itself. Some of these diseases include Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, Graves' disease, lupus, multiple sclerosis, and many, many others. Um, you know, in clinical practice, I see so many people struggling with autoimmune disorders, and it's getting worse because when you put the stress factor, the toxification factor, and the lifestyle factor that most Americans are living, not following God's design, we're able to allow the genetic representation, this is called epigenetics, of that gene to represent itself in an opportune environment. What is the opportune environment? Immunosuppression. So when we suppress the immune system, we're allowing this autoimmune response to occur. And obviously, we do not want to turn on these genes. We do not want to turn on the autoimmune diseases. So. If that's the case and we realize the pathogens are invading our body, we have an immune system to fight them off. We don't want to enable the pathogens to have a long-term effect to us, such as an autoimmune disease. What are we going to do? Well, let's go back to health literacy is the key to longevity. What we're going to do is we're going to do some basic things around the house and in our life because we're going to improve lifestyle. Poor sleep. Quality and quantity is essential. Solid sleep establish a consistent sleep-wake cycle. Go, around, go to bed around the same time every night. Wake up around the same time every morning. That means eight to nine hours of good quality sleep. Get out of being, or in, if you are in a sedentary lifestyle, get out of it. Sedentary lifestyle is the quickest way to enhance chronic illness, 
and to promote immunosuppression. Poor nutritional status. Let's get away from all of those man-made foods. Let's make sure that 90% of our food is not processed man-made food. Let's really focus on the quality of our food, not just the calorie count, count, but the quality of our food is what is essential. Poor antioxidant status. How do we get antioxidants? If you're not getting enough antioxidants, you're lowering your immune function. We get antioxidants from fruits and vegetables. The Americans are substantially deficient in antioxidants. We do not eat enough fruits and vegetables, particularly those vegetables. Every day, we want to eat an abundance of fresh fruits and vegetables and improve the amount of antioxidants we have in our body. Excessive toxic chemical exposure. We're constantly being exposed to chemicals, whether we're breathing it in, whether we're rubbing it on our skin, whatever. Throughout our day, whether we're eating it, these toxins build up inside of us, and that absolutely has an immune compromise. We do not want to compromise our immune system, so we want to watch out what we're ingesting, what we're rubbing on our skin, and obviously what we're breathing. So, then finally, stress. Excessive daily stress is also going to be a major contributor to immunosuppression. I went over that in my stress shows. If we're living in that fight or flight response mechanism, which is supposed to be reserved by design, when a lion walks in the room and I'm supposed to go into that fight or flight response, we're not supposed to be doing that in our day-to-day -day activity. Okay, so those are some good takeaways for this week's show. I will break these down for you into our next show. We'll get a little bit more specific. And hopefully you'll learn this week that immunosuppression is something you do not want to be playing around with and we want to empower our immune system. Something you could all do, please go to drprudian.com. That's spelled P-R-O-O-D-I-A-N. And please become a blog subscriber. I blog every Wednesday and I'd love to hear feedback and for you to become a member of my blog site. You've been listening to the By Design radio program, and thank you for joining me, Dr. James Prudian, for this week's episode. Feel free to submit any questions you have. Have a blessed week, and God bless. You've been listening to By Design with Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare. To learn more, visit us at tandemradio.com, that's tandemradio.com, or on Facebook. And don't forget to email us with your questions. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, hope you have a healthy week, and we look forward to you joining us next time for more fantastic insights from Dr. James Prudian on By Design, a special production of Tandem Radio.